real life. <clears throat> Welcome, friends, at Blackstone Bitcoin Talk. Today is uh, 4th April. And welcome everybody who joined us today. Um, today we're gonna share what we think about the market, uh, what is next steps uh, on the BTC or altcoins as well. So stay tuned to this live stream and um, don't forget to put thumbs up or thumbs down if you like or, or you don't enjoy it. Uh, Okay, uh, I think everybody is waiting for the um, what is going to be next on BTC, right? Uh, Phoenix, uh, hello, and uh, I want to know what do you think about Bitcoin? Hello, bro. I am good. I am waiting for correction to uh, four thousand five hundred or four thousand six hundred. Before uh, making up again. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm agree with your opinion with this. Um, and uh, uh, I have a few thoughts about the market. Um, actually, we have a few interesting things going on on the charts on uh, a Bitmax chart of XBT perpetuals. And uh, what is going on on Bitfinex chart? Uh, the charts is um, a bit different. They are uh, having um, some, you know, some um, differences. And uh, if we're going to look at the daily chart on uh, Bitcoin USD on Bitfinex, then we're going to see that resistance of 2018 uh which i made here it is not broken yet look if we're gonna connect these tops then on bitphoenix this resistance not broken and uh i kind of uh, you know i'm kind of agree with this because it is really looking like not broken it is looking like um you know fake breakout and um you can see that this long, long shadow on this uh, long week on this candlestick. So um, I think this is uh, the uh, also known as a rejection, right? So if this is a rejection of this resistance, then we are probably going to retrace from this resistance, as I think, and as uh, a lot of people think as well with me. And um, I think uh, Mike Bitcoin Wizard is agree with this as well, and uh, just to uh, what Phoenix said, um, we need to retrace to the previous resistance area, which was at uh, <clears throat> somewhere near uh, 4,300, 4,500 something, and uh, this area is uh, looking really interesting to uh, make. A rebound again so this is what i'm expecting from btc at the moment and uh, uh, this uh, area if they didn't hold it mean we go down a lot maybe we broke three thousand if uh, this exactly. area will not uh, hold yeah exactly uh you know what uh, we have because, a... uh, we, it will be like a ball trap or uh, like only for uh, some player uh, like Bitmax made this pump to make liquidation <coughs> of many short positions. Because I read uh, yesterday uh, losses for beers in this pump uh, about uh, 450 million dollars uh -huh. as liquidation. Uh -huh. So maybe Betmex or some bigger player made this pump like to make liquidation and make big profits from this. Yeah, possible. 
So anyway, uh, yeah, if uh, if uh, 4,500 will not uh, hold this area, then uh, it will be probably uh, bigger problems for uh, BTC. You know what? In 2014, we had a similar situation where the price is uh, tried to make another bull run. And um, as I see, uh, as, we, as we saw from the history, the price couldn't break the resistance at the time and uh, it moved uh, lower and uh, make another new lows in th this year. So maybe we cur currently in the similar situation and we talk about this um, fake breakout, about this fake uh, bull, uh, bull run, about the bull trap in, uh, in December, in November or something like this. <clears throat> from the for, uh, mostly from the first of our live streams in every live stream we repeating the same thing that in the long term we are probably in a bull trap <clears throat> so yeah uh mike just connected hello mike how are you uh hello i don't hear you maybe your microphone is turned uh, off what about now yeah now is good hello yeah it's just the volume okay how are you? How you doing, buddy? Oh, good. Shit. Okay, uh, we just talked about the BTC and what is go probably is going to be next. And um, our basic idea right now that the price is probably going to revisit the 4,500 area. Do you agree with this? Uh, 4,200, definitely. I'm pretty yeah. sure and it's going to break it. I wouldn't buy there. Okay, uh, yeah, it, it probably will break it, but um, we still have some, uh, you know, chances to make another wave. I mean about the Iliot waves, if you're going to count uh, waves here, one and two, and we got in the three, then we probably will have a t uh, three, four wave uh, here and probably another uh, way up to the 6K, maybe, just maybe. This is my opinion on this uh, situation. I think uh, it need test uh, 5,800, yeah. uh, need test it before go down more. Yeah, but, I agree uh, with for this. For safety, uh, this zone, as we said, uh, 4,400 maybe will be as a stop loss and uh, check with follow up Bitcoin God in this uh, point. I think uh, to make a really good stop loss for the trade, uh, we need to figure it out where where is the one to one uh, level one uh, highest point, right? So level one uh, wave one highest point is about uh, uh, four thousand three hundred on Bitfinex, and if we're going to switch to the Bitmax chart, we're going to have a uh, one thousand two hundred. Uh, so, if the price will overlap this level, then it will be means that our idea about Elliott waves um, uh, cycle, about Elliott waves one, two, three, four, five waves uh, are wrong, and we are mistaken. So, uh, if what I'm going to do right now, because I'm trading uh, at uh, Bitfinex for myself, and I uh, I, I currently have orders for really not, not really big positions but uh, mostly from the altcoins and they are um, matches this analysis Elliott wave analysis for this area of retracement for the fourth wave so uh, my idea is uh, that the price will probably um, if you, as you can see I use uh, uh, Fibonacci here and uh, as I think that the fourth wave is probably going to revisit 0 0.5 uh, Fibonacci or 0 0.3. So if it's going to be lower than uh, I am, I'm probably wrong uh, with this. Uh, but uh, in, uh, in e every strategy, we should have some backup plan. And um, what if, if, if we are, I'm wrong with this levels, what, what next? Um, if we're going to switch to the two-hour chart, for instance, 
Uh, well, it's pretty messy. Um, I will delete this. Um, if you see this one, two level, or uh, one, two waves, then uh, we we should find another one, two waves inside this uh, wave tree, right? So a one and two and a three and five. Three and four, five. So uh, I will make it red and bolder. Um, so another level which will, uh, you know, uh, determines the retracement. If I'm wrong with this previous two, then it will be probably uh, four thousand two hundred on uh, Bitfinex. And uh, if we're gonna switch to Bitmax prices. Um, then it will be four thousand five. Uh, I'm sorry, four thousand fifty. So uh, this is basic levels that where I'm expecting the price to rebound, and uh, this four thousand five uh, fifty on the bitmix, or um, this level four thousand two hundred. So these two levels are really important to make another move. If the price will overlap these levels, then we are uh, probably we are more bearish than we think right now. So we need to figure this out. If it's gonna uh, rebound from them, or it will break it, you know. Right. So these two levels are key levels for me, and I think. Uh, they are really, really clear to see. Uh, they are really easy to find these levels. And um, if we're going to see this uh, head and shoulders inverted, someone shared this idea on the, our chat uh, in Telegram. Uh, and I shared this idea maybe a few days ago or maybe a few weeks ago, I don't remember. Uh, this head and shoulders, it looks like head and shoulders, and um, it already reached the target of head and shoulders. Adam, Adam and Eve pattern. Yeah, as well, Adam and Eve, yeah, I agree with this. It's all, all like the same thing, the same target, you know, the, from the, you measure the yeah. the head from the neck, and then you put it on top. It was, exactly. Whatever you want to yeah. call it, it's all the same. Yeah, the target is reached, yeah, I agree with this. So, anyway... Uh, we need to just figure out what what is the uh, trend uh, currently going on, you know. And uh, as I uh, see on the um, this chart on Bitfinex, I have um, you know what I will um, probably delete everything here because I don't, I don't need it. Uh, I want to show you guys uh, moving averages here, which is really interesting. I have moving average nine and moving average thirty. Um, on daily chart, they are really useful to understand where the trend is going. So uh, it is really easy to read. So if we go, if we see blue uh, above the um, violet, then we are bullish and vice versa. If violet is above the blue, then we are bearish. So currently, you can see that the blue line is a. Uh, uh, higher than the uh, violet one, so we are in a bullish uh, territory right now. So that's why uh, today we are talking about the retracement, where we can take the price, uh, you know, to uh, to make another entry. That's why I'm talking about this. Uh, you guys, uh, someone l loves to, you know, uh, sell the rib. Uh, and I agree with the strategy sell the rib. Uh, and this is really a great strategy like a buy deep. So if we're going to sell the rib, then right now is the right rib, you know, because every every time we see the touch of this trend line, we're going down, down and down and down. So anyway. Yeah. Um, that's the logarithmic, yeah, log. Yeah, this logarithmic and uh, <laughs> I, as I see, uh, Commonly traders on the um, on the Wall Street. I don't know how to name them. Uh, if we're gonna check like a CME uh, chart, if we're gonna check the uh, Chicago uh, chart, 
then we have then we have another um, interesting setup here as well we're gonna have uh two uh logarithmic scale and we have we don't we we have here something interesting too we have here in breakout and one um one trend line isn't broken yet but anyway there is a different pattern on the chart there is a you know symmetric triangle uh let me just uh i'm trying to point it you can see the here uh symmetric triangle let me just make it bigger So this is symmetrical triangle, and the target of this uh, symmetrical triangle is already reached. So um, anyway, I think they are waiting for another pattern right now. So these guys are probably uh, already closed their long positions, and they are probably waiting for another pattern because this is really strong pattern where you can take a lot of profits, and they are definitely did about thirty profits percent profits here um yeah. so right now we are we don't have any pattern where we can you know um, you know stand on this pattern and say yeah we, we will trade this right now we only have four hour uh bearish divergence which is not really strong at the moment i think this is not <clears throat> really strong signal uh, right now uh because this is too low time frame for this move. And uh, what we have on the uh, CME futures chart, it is really interesting that we have here um, this, um, you know, um, uptrend channel. It is really um, interesting to see where, if, if the price will uh, take the pals uh somewhere <clears throat> in this area then it will be really really interesting opportunity to take another long you know uh because the the uptrend channel will work and um this is what i'm expecting from this chart and uh from another chart which we talked today already this one uh, i said uh, the strategy sell the rip is really good yeah, this is probably a rib, and we have a uh, ex uh, uh, we have the same uh, bearish divergence on the four-hour chart on Bitfinex, on Bitnex, and other charts. Uh, but uh, anyway, we need to figure it out where the strong support, uh, which could hold the price. Okay. <clears throat> um, Bro. Yeah. Hold on. Mm -hmm. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay, let me uh, just uh, check the check our questions. Um, yeah, there is somebody that asked. Vaslav we... asking, do you really think that BTC will jump 1,000 USD now after <laughs> this strong move? Well, it's hard to say if this. Uh, we have some probabilities for this, you know. I, I have like a 5% probability for this right now at the moment because the key levels is, isn't broken yet. If the key levels will broke, like we talked like five minutes ago, we talked about key levels, which determines the f uh, further trend. Uh, if these levels will be broken, I will say like 60% for the drop. Uh, right now at the moment, 5% that we uh, will go lower than 3K. <clears throat> Five percent, yeah. I got like moment, 95 I percent. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, you know, I, I will tell you why, but later. <laughs> okay. Uh, Phoenix. Hello. Yes. Okay, so now you're buying a camera. You're always hiding, man. <laughs> no, I have camera. Uh, I don't like to talk with camera. Okay. <laughs> uh, excuse me. Not problem. Uh, Felix, what do you think about the price uh, which we just talked? For Bitcoin, as I said, uh, 
this zone and the back up and uh, test 5,800. You, you think it's going to go to 5,800? What? So you say you think it's going to 5,800? Yeah. But All after right. the test. Right, right. Understand. It need now <laughs> retress, but after that, I think we will see 580. Um, 5,800. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. My okay, stop yeah. loss is this zone, uh, as we said, uh, 4,500 or 4,400 this zone. So where do you think the retest is going to be? 4,200? No, I don't think we'll uh, back to 4,000. 4, so, so the retest is, is, is happening right now? Is that what you say? Retest of the trend line? I think I you want to say that about this uh, levels, 4,500, 4,300 something, where the retest is probably going to be. And um, okay. the uh, I think the, the, this levels is... Uh, According to the um, Elliott waves analysis, they are really nice to see that these levels will. Maybe not uh, um, can I can I share my chart? Yeah, of course. Okay, Mike, you are here. <laughs> now we will go to one thousand. <laughs> <laughs> I always say that. Um, okay, let us see. Let me see. Do you guys see it now? Let me know. Got it? Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is a chart that, do you actually, what, do you see my trading view? Yes. Yeah, it's a chart we've been talking about, like, many live streamings. Um, um, we discussed this, Artem and I, we discussed about this chart, comparing, you know, the 2014 and now. Um, we estimate the dates to be, you know, the bull trap around March 2019. Uh, then I got a little confused and I thought um, we, we won't break a 4,200 and go straight down. And I was calling for like a short at 4,150, 42 with liquidation above 6,000 and target uh, 18. Uh, because I'm always been like pretty sure we're going to go down uh, to this level before breaking 6K. Or at least double bottom here, but I what I believe is we're gonna go down. So it actually took a little bit longer, but we reached the 21 MA or 30 MA on the on the monthly chart. We also reached this uh, resistance level over here, which is what 5290. Um, this white line, and I think it's it's about to dump next week. Uh, we're gonna make a hole here, and then I have an explanation for that thing. Um, I have um, many proof. For example, altcoins, right? Um, look, look at a Litecoin. You know, I like to trade divergence. And every time you have a high level of, uh, not every time, but most of the time you have a high level of, on the RSI, uh, you have a big chance to make a bear divergence, right? But when we have like extreme overbought levels, like night, like this, like it's, we don't necessarily make a, a bear divergence. Uh, look this case. Um, I, we, we compared this fractal on Litecoin on 2014 and now, and it broke the main downtrend line, right? Yeah. And it went all the way up. So I measured the percentages and I projected here. And this is what I, I put a chart on my channel saying that, and we discussed that, that Litecoin could reach 97, right? It actually reached, what, like 100? Hmm. To reach it 50 and down 100. And yeah, like here. So mm -hmm. uh, you got to be careful if you're holding Litecoin, for example, because you see this extremely overbought level here, and then it just went down, like straight down with no nothing, you know, well, a little uh, rebound here, and then enter in accumulation zone for a long period of time. Uh, this accumulation zone will be somewhere around uh 40 39 or maybe uh 33 that's that's about the range that you want to buy Litecoin. anyway the reason i'm explaining this is because if Litecoin is giving you this pattern which uh, seems to be playing very well right uh 
that means that Bitcoin needs to go down. Exactly. Uh, but where? Let's see. And then I'm going to put the Bitcoin chart here. So uh, we had the regular trend line that we talked about and it obviously was broken, right? The, uh, you know, the linear scale, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was broken here, but we never broke the logarithmic one. You were talking about this too, right? Uh, there are like many ways to project this line. Uh, to me, I try to put the, you know, uh, more amount of touches that you can get like here. And sometimes you get like fakes, fake house like that, like this one, which one uh, was actually faster than the one right here. I thought this one was going to be the same, you know, at the same speed that this one happened. So uh, we have this accumulation pattern, the, you know, Adam Neve, however you want to call it. And then we reach the target that you measure like this. And it, it is actually ma matches the uh, the downtrend line, right? And uh, there is a common thing here on crypto. Every time we see a pattern like this, like a head and shoulders, just let me know if you see a retest of that. Look, every time we have a bullish pattern, there's no retest on crypto. There's too much FOMO. Where's the retest here? There wasn't any retest. If you even see, uh, see like a uh, smaller time frames, maybe like a little week and it just keep going higher. Once it reached the target, that's it. These people sell and it's going to go lower. So once you break this level, you see this dead cat bounce here because people think this is, I don't know, retest or whatever, and then it goes lower, right? Yeah, I agree with this. So um, anyway, um, Konyx, uh do you hear? Um, Mike, you said about the Litecoin that it needs to go like a 30 yes, something, sure right? Yeah, I want to share something about yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, just, just, a, just a minute. Uh, Mike, you said that the uh, Litecoin going to 30 something, and um, I agree with these numbers. You know, 30 something is a really good uh, level where the price could stop and make some uh, sideways. But uh, uh, when you're talking about that BTC should drop to make this happen, I uh, agree, but uh, for like 40%. You know why? Because uh, if you're going to check Litecoin BTC chart, you're going to see why. And I want to Phoenix uh, share his uh, Litecoin BTC chart right now. Uh, and we will continue uh, about uh, Bitcoin after that. Okay. Okay. Uh, one minute. When you uh, my chart show, please tell me. Yeah, sure. Okay, now we see. Okay, uh, for Litecoin against Bitcoin, as we know, uh, or we saw in its chart, uh, it is like cycles. It respects its cycle for Litecoin against Bitcoin. So for me, I think still Litecoin may grow up until uh, 0 0.0 to 229 before we see market go down. Yeah, I agree with that. We, and, we discussed uh, that with that. Really until the end of April. And I made those cycles before uh, about uh, days, how many days take it take between... Uh, go up and go down before some months and uh, we expected it will go up until the end of april so yeah i, I agree with that but i got a question uh, for you uh, yes this chart i agree with it completely but you're trading satoshis that doesn't mean that Litecoin is gonna go higher in us usd i mean it could but it doesn't necessarily mean that, correct? It, Bitcoin could go lower and Litecoin could, you know, keep just ranging and maybe double top at 97, 99, while Bitcoin just keep going down. And this, and that will make this chart happen. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, okay. look, guys, guys, I want to point you on the, another levels. Uh, if we're going to see that the level of uh, 184 at this chart, is a really strong resistance. Uh, we might uh, hit another 
200 something, but uh, I think this is low probability. But uh, about the level 184, which you mark it on the chart, uh, look at this level. This is a really strong level, and uh, Litecoin BTC chart is really respecting this level. So we should uh, think that this is a really strong resistance, and everything above it is just a bonus. You know, and uh, look at what Litecoin usually did when it reached the level of 184. It going lower and uh, it goes uh, to 107 uh, or 110 on something. And if you can see, it start to range on these levels and uh, it, uh, the 100 level is really strong level on Litecoin. So my idea was about if uh bitcoin uh well not, not Bitcoin. if litecoin usd price will drop to uh, 30 something and if btc will keep in our um strategy that it will not go down if btc will go sideways at uh, the range of 4200 4500 something uh then litecoin bitcoin chart will drop to uh to retest uh 107 level or something and um, this will mean that BTC, uh, uh, Litecoin USD chart will drop to, to, to 31. Uh, I tried to explain this clear, but uh, if you guys have some questions, just let me know. What do you think? Are you asking to the public <laughs> or to us? <laughs> okay yeah, uh, for uh, bitcoin let me check my chart because i <laughs> i don't post it but i follow up it mm -hmm. one minute uh, rsi for weekly st still it is uh, good to grow up for bitcoin uh Chart is still loading, so. All right, look. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can. I sent you, bro. You can share it uh, from you if you want. Look, I have internet problem. Uh, yeah, we see. But it's, it's weird because uh, we can hear you very well, but. Yeah, maybe it's a low band switch. Uh, anyway, uh, okay, um, Mike, uh, can you please open the chart uh, from BTC that you described? Yeah, so I want to explain the reasons why I do. I think why I think that. Uh, sorry, uh, Bitcoin already top, and this is um, you know I usually expect uh, some kind of double top or structure to form like this, right? Double top. Uh, well, distributions on here, kind of like all double top. Uh, we have like a rising wedge. It's not visible on daily, but it, it's visible on four hour chart. And then we got some, you know, weird stuff like this. And and the reason is, uh, shit, hold on. One, we already reached the target of this sun. So whoever was buying here that pumped the price with this, you know, the 21,000 Bitcoins that they bought or whatever it is, uh, he already took profit here. You can see uh, there was another clear signal. Hold on. Let me redraw it. So if you if you see this white line in a four-hour chart, well, not even a four-hour chart, like a two-hour chart, I think. Let me see, 30 minutes. So the price it's, actually uh, broke just add it. Uh, if we check all uh, USDT pairs like Litecoin or Ethereum or ADA uh, or BNB last period, which had the same pattern like Bitcoin, they made big move. Yeah, yeah, Not I agree. Just one move up. Yeah, I if agree. Bitcoin will follow up same uh, patterns. I think uh, will make good. Uh, still have uh, time to grow up more. Right, but look, this is what I think is not gonna happen. Uh, you see, there's a, there was a, a bearish divergence here on the 30 minute chart, right? And we just keep going higher, higher, higher. And then 
uh, this 30 minute candle close above the resistance, the key resistance level, because this level means that the bear market is over. If we close a daily candle above this uh, 50, well, actually in Bitfinex is 52. I was talking about 51, was kind of the same because I was uh, taking a look to uh, Bitmex chart, I think. It's 52 then, at, on all exchanges. Yesterday, right. the price. On all exchanges, hit uh, five thousand two hundred or more. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so it's we broke it, and then people think like, "Hey, uh, this is a confirmation. We're gonna buy the retest, right?" Uh, and then what happened is this happened like twelve minutes before the daily candle closes, which is the you know the important signal that the the, the really good traders know that the um, daily chart is the important one, right? So twelve minutes before the close of this candle, this guy made a huge sell off and sent the price, what, like to 50, like five, 600 points down. So he's giving a clear signal that he doesn't want uh, the price to go above this line. He, he doesn't want to be like, he's saying, hey, the bear market is still in play, you know, because look. So he, he took profit of his thing over here. So any attempt to go higher, he's gonna keep selling because he probably got an average price of like somewhere around here, right? Because he bought here, he bought here, and he also bought here to pump the price. So he probably got an average of like, uh, let's say like 38 or something. And if you're buying like billions or a hundred, I don't know how many millions you have to, you know, buy to pump this thing, but you have like uh 25%. If you buy a hundred millions of dollars and you have like 30% of from your average price or 32%, you're going to take profit. Like, this is like a, what, like two days, three days move. So also if the price goes higher, uh, this means that the bear market is over and I have, I don't agree with that because take a look to this. We haven't correct enough time. We have, we have correct uh, to a good levels, you know, like 80, what, 87%, 85%, which is a lot. But look, look the time, look the previous bear market, right? Let's let's measure here. Date range from the, this bottom to the last bottom was 224 days. And then we take this bottom and 224 is over here, right? So there's not enough time. And people ask me like, well, it, it could be faster. And it's not faster because each cycle it's lower. When when a coin, when a market is new, the cycles are faster because the market cap is, is is very tiny. So you get more gains, more percentage gains faster. And then every correction is gonna be slower. And there's an explanation for that. The the guy or the like the um, whales in the market that like dominates the market, they made a lot of money here, they stole here, and then they need to buy over here. What happened is that they need more time to buy because now they have much more money and they can buy much more. So once they buy here and then pump the price and they made this huge amount of profit, they saw like, I'm pretty sure they start selling from here, here, all this, all this, all the way down. So now they need much more time for the price to drop and much more time of accumulation so they can put all this money in the market because they have much more even if they're going to put only a percentage of what they make here, it's going to be much more money. Right, so each cycle is slower. This is normal in any market, so it's not gonna be faster. There's no way, like, this is kind of um, will be kind of weird if I'm wrong and we're not going to 1800. At least we're gonna retest uh, this level and just keep bouncing here. And if we, if I see this price action, I will say, Yeah, we're in accumulation zone, it's gonna be a little bit longer. Look, this is the date 2020, 2000. June 2020. So the bull market is not going to start yet. Okay, we don't say the the market has a bull market started for Bitcoin. Yeah, but if we break this, like you're saying, we're going to go to 5800. It needs to be like pretty fast and close below it. And we already had a fake fake breakout, so I don't think we're going to get it. I thought we we were going to get it yesterday, like 56, 57, and then down. But you know it reversed at 53 something. So I don't think there's going to be another chance to go higher. And 
I mean, it kind of looks like if it was going to form like a bearish divergence and pumps really hard, but if it doesn't, we're going to be out of the bear market and it, it wouldn't make any sense. That's what I, I don't think it's going to happen and it's going to just keep dropping. And once we break this level, it means that the whale that bought here is not defending this level anymore. He already saw and the price is going to go lower. He's going to push it lower. Okay, thank you. You just okay, thank you. Uh, so oh. for trading, I think uh, for long uh, we can take a stop loss at uh, four thousand five hundred. I think four thousand because we need to choose uh, both uh, sides, both uh, scenarios. Not only focus on okay, it will go down, or focus on it will go up. Maybe we are in mistake. So we need the. Uh, Take a stop loss or uh, stop lo uh, stop buy. Yeah, bro, you are you are right that we need uh, some strategy like where we should put this stop really losses. Right, important for uh, members and for us. Look, as I think that uh, important we stop loss for have for trading here, uh, we need to have here a stop loss about uh, what. Uh, for 1,300, the first stop loss is really important. For 1,300, the stop loss. And the second stop loss is uh, really important as well. It's, um, let me check uh, what is one, 4,150. Uh, this is between Phoenix. And uh, from, um, from, um, and from BitMEX, we're going to have 4,200 as well. And uh, another level, 4,050. Oops. 4,050. So these two levels are really strong uh, uh, stop loss levels that you need to keep if you want to, you know, hold BTC, right? Not, I'm not talking about the margin trading, about, I'm talking about holding, you know. And um, <clears throat> yeah, for me, this is my basic strategy for this period of time. Uh, these two levels is a really strong. And uh, if we're going to break these levels, it will mean that we are going probably to another bear market phase. Okay, and uh, I got, uh, guys, I want uh, to say, say thank you about your explanation on BTC, and I prepared something else for today, which I uh, noticed a few days ago. <clears throat> I noticed the same behavior on uh, NEO uh, maybe two months ago, but um, only a few days ago I noticed this on uh, Bitcoin. Okay, uh, what I have here, I have... Um, the comparison between Litecoin US dollar uh, on the right side of the chart, uh, Litecoin USD of 2014, 2015, 16, and 17. And uh, at the left, we have BTC chart from 2017, 2018, 2019. Um, what I have to prove you that we are probably going to retest the uh, 4,200 something. Um, I have Fibonacci uh, levels here. If you guys see the Fibonacci uh, in the hit, time, uh, hit plus in our chat uh, inside the live stream, if you not see the Fibonacci, I will make an, another color. Um, and um, for the look at this number uh, of 0 0.1. Uh, 0.1 Fibonacci, look. Uh, this level is a really uh, interesting level because the price of Litecoin 2015, uh, after the um, really big dump, it reached this level and uh, it stopped it on this level and goes just sideways. So the level of 0.1 Fibonacci. And uh, if we're gonna measure the similar um, Fibonacci, from the top to the bottom, uh, then we gonna have, uh, you know, the, uh, the 0 0.1 on 5,020 level. 
and the price of BTC just reached this level. And this is really interesting to see where the price will make a sideways or will it make a sideways like it did on the Litecoin. Um, so what I'm expecting is that this sideways, if they will confirm, then we are totally bullish. If they are, if this uh, will not confirm it, then we are not bullish. Then we are going to stick the uh, the previous strategy that we had uh, a lot of months ago, just from November, maybe uh, just what we discussed it just five minutes ago with Mike and Phoenix. Uh, so we just need to see what what is going on with the chart and uh, find the best ways to trade it. So if we're going to make um, you know, Fibonacci here, put Fibonacci from, let me check the daily chart. Okay, from the daily chart. The price is uh, drop it to 0 0.2. If we're going to uh, use this, oops. If we're gonna use the similar to the um, Bitcoin, Yes, here's okay. Then we're probably going to move uh, somewhere inside this Fibonacci as well. So we need to figure out where exactly. I don't know. Will it uh, make the similar to 0 0.2? Because the Litecoin just uh, pumped it really hard from the one dollar to eight. Uh, but BTC make made another smaller move, and uh, this why Fibonacci is not um, not uh, the same. Uh, behavior here. So anyway, the sideways action that uh, was on Litecoin back in 2015-16, it is really interesting to see that we are probably going to have here on BTC or not. And uh, for me, this is really interesting opportunity to, uh, you know, to confirm that if the price will uh, hold the 4,200, 4,300 level. Um, Okay, um, what do we have next for today? Uh, yeah, somebody asked me, not here in the chat, but about some the moving averages we on daily, the 50, 100, 200, we talked about it like months ago. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I would like to like talk about that really quick. So okay. um, make people more confident that, you know, there's no time to buy yet. Like we will see at least... Uh, three thousand dollars again um all right hold on uh so yeah Crazy move. So this is a 50-day moving average, 100 and 200. Uh, during a bull run or uh, bull market, uh, the 50, the price is on top of the 50. Uh, the 50 is on top of the 100, and the 100 is on top of the 200. Right. Uh, once we get the the cross of the 50 over the 100 and and the 200, and that means we are starting a bear market. Now. Uh, it's very common that because this is a, you know, moving average of our lagging indicators. After the, we see the cross, we have a pullback, but that doesn't mean it's bullish. And then uh, the moving averages align all the way around like a bearish setup. And then we have the 200 on top, which was below the other two, right? And then we have the 100 and then we have the 50. And we have the price below it for this amount of time. Uh, and the accumulation zone is kind of, you know, uh, confusing. Uh, we have, like, there's no, there's nothing clear, right? Cross up, cross down, until we get a huge pump. And then the faster moving average, which is a 50, uh, is the first one to cross both of them. This is a signal, not only one, they, they have to, it has to cross both, like the 200 and 100. And then the 100 day moving average is going to follow. And then we get the bullish setup, right? Uh, 
so we start a new cycle. Let me, and then we see during the whole cycle, the 50, sometimes it crosses the 100, but it never crosses the 200. 50 never crosses the 200. And then we get this, you know, we keep going up, up like crazy. We get the same uh, moving averages set up, right? During the whole bull run. And, and then we get the cross. Here's the critical point. We got the cross of the 50 on the 200. We got the pullback just like last time, right? Uh, we reject the 200 daily and they align bearish, right? It's now it's a price 50, 100 and 200 and same over here. So uh, we still don't have any signal for bullishness. If we cross, if when the 50 crosses the 200, then, uh, then we're going to have a pullback and then we buy that pullback because we're getting the signal that the bear market is over, right? Because the you know the average prices. Let's you know take a quick look to the previous one. Yeah, you for long cross? term, yeah, this is really cor correct uh, notice. So we cross the fifty. Let's say we cross the fifty right now. The, I mean, the fifty crosses the both, right? Mm -hmm. But notice that they get they get really tight before this happen. So when they get really tight, and the fifty cross and we get this pump, we're gonna have another buy opportunity. Look at the RSI, like. We could be like maybe here, maybe I'm wrong. We, we're not going to eighteen thousand, but we're gonna see at three thousand, three two hundred again at least. You know, we we saw it two times here. It doesn't have to be two. Could be three times or just range here. So anyway, uh, the fifty crosses the first time that it crosses both. We have a pullback. It's kind of hard because look, it went all the way down, but and then. Uh, yeah, it's kind of confusing cross it down again. You can actually buy with confirmation uh, once you get this spread between the three of them, right? And you get the price making the first um, the first highest low here, correct? So we have shit, hold on. So we've been making uh, lower lows all the time. And then we have the first highest low here over this uh, broken resistance. And we, we get this moving averages aligned for bullishness. So it doesn't matter. Like I understand that all of us want to buy here, but sometimes it's really difficult because we're trying to spot the bottom and then we buy expensive. And then, you know, we ended up spending more money uh, to try to get it cheap than actually just waiting for the proper for, for the right time uh after all all we need is to when we put the money we want it to go up that's it we don't care about the price we want it to buy and go up it's not the same to buy the uh, bitcoin at like here and then it goes down that you know buying a little bit more expensive but it's gonna go up the money you put is going up so this moment hasn't come yet here we haven't even get the cross of the 50 above the 200 when we get it you know we're gonna get a pullback we could probably do another bottom, but you can start buying or just wait for this, uh, whatever the accumulation uh, sun is, you know, we have to like wait longer to see if this is a real accumulation sun and let the market to prove, right? According to moving averages. So, uh, you know, just to respond to that question of that person. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay, um we have some questions here on the um, chat. Uh the um, people asking about the halving and um let me just check uh Adrian asking about usually bull run starts uh one year before the halving. What do you think about this? You know what Adrian? We um mm, we uh, have uh, seen that the halving on BTC is uh, somehow uh, makes um, uh, makes influence for the price, right? Uh, it happened two times already, and uh, we we trying to expect that it will happen third time. Maybe yes, maybe not. This is what we know right now. So um, for for this moment, I think that the halving of the uh, price reward 
um, of the of I'm sorry for the mining reward is uh, not really a strong uh, signal at the moment. And uh, at the moment, we're trying to figure out what is what is best to do with BTC that we are holding or you are holding and trying to make you advice, right? So if we're going to talk about that long term, um, you know, about the long term, I mean, uh, where is the uh, accumulation zone or something like this, uh, I want to share uh, something really interesting about the accumulation zones, uh, how they look like, what they have, uh, you know, what, what the structure they have. Check this slide. Um, this is slide is showing us the five types of accumulation zones according to Wyckoff and um, according to Wyckoff analysts uh, who make this uh, who made this um, slide. Uh, so you can see there is a five types of bottoms. This is cup and handle, head and shoulders, double bottom, descending wedge, and ascending channel. All of these uh, charts, I share it in my training queue page as well. So you can easily find it by just using these names. And um, it is really interesting to see that uh, a lot of uh, people talking about that BTC is uh, bottom right or not. Well, a lot of people talking about uh, what the pattern will be. And at the moment, I didn't find the, the confirmation of any of these patterns uh, except uh, these three ones. Because in every of these three uh, types of double bottom, descending wedge, or ascending channel, we have um, you know this B phase where the price is uh, going up, right? Like this. I'm sorry. Um, I will try to make... Uh, okay, um, like here, the B phase, um, so, um, and here, the B phase again, and here again. So at the moment on BTC, we're probably in this uh, stage on the market. You know, we may we made the higher height uh, to previous um, to previous um, consolidation zone, right? And at the moment, we are uh, we don't know what will be next. Will we make another? Uh, accumulation here or make a lower low to make accumulation uh, lower or we make higher high and go higher so at the moment we are currently don't know in which um, accumulation zone we are because it is uh, it is still developing but it is not completed yet so it is really hard to find the bottom at the moment but most uh, of our coins uh, according to my chart that I shared on my training queue page, they are bottom at uh, in some in, in the, uh, these types of accumulation phases. Let me show you some examples mm. from the. Let me check the, the page. Okay, from Litecoin, Litecoin show with us descending wedge pattern, right? Uh, yeah, so this descending wedge pattern, it is, it was in accumulation phase and we are broke it to the upside and make a huge uh, price action here, okay? This was descending wedge. Um, what else? Uh, Adam's coin had uh, ascending channel, you know? <laughs> Again, huge profit. Um, what else? Um, cup and handle from CMT. Still going up. Um, so 
and uh, the head and shoulders. What is that CMT? Is that an altcoin? CMT, yes, it's coin. This is Kyber, Kyber Miles. It's head and shoulders on the, the ADA BTC chart. So as you can see, all of uh, and, the, and double bottom on Poly is still developing as I see, still developing, and uh, it reaches some targets, but looks like it's still moving sideways. Maybe it is not confirmed yet. Maybe I posted it too early, but it still looks like a double bottom. Maybe it will make another pump uh, soon. Uh, anyway, most of these coins, which I just uh, show with you, they are all according to the accumulation phases on this slide. Um, so That's very for, nice, man. Yeah, uh, so for BTC, as I see, as I think, um, where is the, I lost there. Uh, so for the BTC, at the moment, we are, uh, at least I don't know in which uh, accumulation pattern we are, but I found really interesting stuff on the internet about Wyckoff phases as well. Um, we have some interesting um, uh, hyperdemic accumulation and hyperdemic distribution phases. They are not uh, uh, show it in the, the slide which I showed you minutes ago, uh, but uh, hyperdemic accumulation means that we having some uh, resistance or support which was broken in the, uh, in the trend which was dominant and the price is just a, uh, really f made a faster ac uh, acceleration faster acceleration uh, and uh, anyway it broke uh, the um, all of these uh, trend lines it broke the support uh, it broke the resistances and um, go just go forward and make a reverse uh, i have uh, the hyperdemic uh, distribution phase uh, example on um, on BTC chart, look at 2017, 2018 chart. We have a hyperdemic distribution here. Uh, look at this resistance. It uh, consists of these highs. And where the price is just broke this resistance, it was the acceleration phase. So in acceleration phase, it made a lot of profits. And uh, I think most of people who watching us today just uh, join it on this move um, in the back in 2017. And these two tops, uh, uh, they are making uh, bearish divergence or any other divergences. Uh, they are naming like a hyperdemic um, because the people, uh, I mean, the price doesn't have enough force to make higher high and move forward again. So, and the price is just breaking this hyperdemic trend line. Uh, some can say a uh, hyper wave or something like this. Um, this really, uh, uh, this trend line have really a narrow uh, angle and it broken. After it broken, it retesting previous uh, resistance, this blue line on the levels here and go below the, this trend line and go below the previous support line as well. So this is the hyperdemic distribution, but what if hyperdemic distribution we're going to uh, make inverse, right? Just invert the chart. We're going to have a hyperdemic accumulation. So this, what I did to BTC chart and uh, Look what I found. I will delete this. Um, I found this similar, um, you know, examples of behavior. Look at this support. Uh, uh, look at this resist uh, support line, which is um, blue color. Uh, it consists of these two tops. If we're going to like a weekly chart. We can connect it even with this and closing price if we're going to use closing prices. So it is 
really good uh, support. And I think a lot of people back in these days waited for this uh, super to rebound, but it uh, didn't happen. And only we have we had only acceleration phase here, and two hyperdemic tops, which made bullish divergence. What about the um, moving averages in both in the in both top cases? Of the, yeah, in the bull run and. Uh, you know, the yeah. distribution uh, let, let, let me finish what, what I talked about and I will switch to moving averages too. Uh, so, and after the, uh, after this bullish divergence, we have retest of this previous support, retest breakout from this support. And uh, right now we are attacking this uh, previous resistance. Right now on the Bitfinex chart, I can draw it uh, like this and we have a breakout. I can draw it like Mike did and we didn't have breakouts. So anyway, there is a lot of opportunities um, and options. About moving averages. Okay, let's add some move, moving averages. Uh, what moving average do you want to add? Yeah, it's just the uh, ones that we talk about, 50, 100, 200 daily. 50 uh, and 200. And yeah, the three of the 50, 100, and 200. Ah, and 200. Okay. 50, 100, and 250. Um, 100. And uh, 200. Can you make that one a little thicker so we can like... Yeah, sure. Uh, I will make it uh, more thicker. So, um, yeah, you, you can see on the daily chart, the, this moving averages is crossing way below this uh, support line, which broken already in this case. Uh, 50 crossing the 100. And let's go check here. 50 crossing 100 on the breakout from the previous support. But you know, you, you, you can see that the breakout from this um, uh, previous resistance, uh, which was in uh, 2018 February, it was pretty close to the cross of these lines. Right. So basically, um, if we get the cross of the hundred above the 200, uh, would be like a perfect match for this distribution and accumulation that you're describing. Yeah, exactly. It will. Let's just confirm. And I think if the price is um, if the price will move in this sideways which i already drawed here in this uh, area which i highlighted with a blue uh, rectangle then we are probably going to have some time for this moving average to come up and cross the moving average to 100 right and then and then i would say like yeah there's it bottom already and that we probably see a uh, 3,400 again, or we will have another buy opportunity, but I will cancel. If we reach your target of 6,000, I will completely cancel my, uh, you know, 1,800, 1,300 target. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with this because, you know, I have a strategy uh, for the bear market. I have a lot of orders, which I set up long time ago, below 3,000 to buy everything. And I have a lot of... Um, and I have some orders right now for this strategy, which I describe it. And I think uh, both can be, everything could happen here, but we we just need to make money here. The, this is only purpose for all of this. Um, so yeah, this is basic things for BTC today. I think we spoke a lot about Bitcoin. Um, and... Hey. One oh, more, yeah. one more uh, thing. Uh, you were talking about the type of, I'm sorry, the type of bottoms, and mm -hmm. I found a really good example that combines one of your bottoms, the double bottom, and the moving averages. Yeah, show sure. you really quick, like two minutes. 
it's a uh, it's not a crypto okay well uh before uh yeah okay oh, i'm sorry man that's gonna be like no problem yeah minute. yeah continue yeah so this is the double bottom that you describe on daily chart right? i think it, it is mostly it is, looks like more like cup and handle well it's, it seems like very clear double bottom here and it, then yeah somehow Okay. If you put the moving averages, uh, you see that the 50 crosses the uh, 200, like we talk about Bitcoin, after that cross, uh, we need to wait for a pullback, right? A pullback close to the 200, uh, but I've seen in many cases, it actually goes down one more time. But of course, when you see that bottoms here, uh, you get FOMO when you want to buy, and then it drops back down again. So it's pretty mm -hmm. uh, scary, right? But yeah, we, we need to get this first cross of the 50 above the 200, and I would call it like for accumulation sum. Yeah. And also in this chart, we have like a bullish divergence even on weekly, but we don't have that uh, yet on Bitcoin. So, but yeah, we'll see. Anyway, uh, if we're talking about hyperdemic accumulation and distribution, it means that all things going faster, you know, because in double bottom, it is slow accumulation, uh, cap and handle, slow accumulation, uh, descending wedge, even slower. Um, so the, you know, the hyperdemic, uh, um, so, uh, hyperdemic accumulation distribution are really hard to, um, to find because they are happening uh, on fast moving, uh, fast moving markets. So you want if you were going to see some uh, examples on the on stock market, I will try to find you some examples maybe tomorrow or so, or a few days uh, on the weekend. But uh, I saw some uh, examples on the stock market as well, and it is really uh, interesting to find the the hyperdemic uh, accumulation. They are really fast. They are really hard to understand what is going on. Most of people, I think, are uh, just trading in FOMO in this case, and uh, they don't know what to do. Like uh, most of people don't want, don't know what to do in 2018 when the price dropped. Even I uh, wasn't know what to do exactly. So yeah, I think the um, hyperdemic accumulation, which is not described on slide, uh, it is hard uh, really hard to trade to to manage the trades in the this case so right. anyway yeah this is head and shoulders yeah yeah so it's like going to 4500 and we'll make maybe divergence oh yeah it's gonna bounce seems like it's gonna bounce right here to maybe uh 49 20 again yeah Okay, we can sell. All right, um, let me check the chat. Oh, there is a lot of people watching us today. Thank you for attending us today. Everybody who watching us, if you like what we talk about, just put thumbs up, let us know that you are live. If you're not like what we're talking about, if you don't agree with us, put thumbs down. And, um, if you not agree, please argument why you don't agree with us, what you have in mind, and I will try to uh, read your comments, okay? Um, we have interesting questions here, a lot of questions about altcoins. We go and check altcoins after a few minutes. Um, and uh, I have uh, have interesting comment about, uh, about altcoins. Uh, Boris Yagmur asking about um, Artem, Mike, and Phoenix. What your boss? Uh, what's your opinions about long-term altcoin investment? When would be the right time? Are we near for it? Uh, Boris, I want to say thank you for this question. This is really important. And uh, for me, uh, if we could talk about long-term investment, I already make some entries for long term i made them um maybe in a, uh, the, the half of the march 
Uh, I don't remember exactly when, but I did some entries in Neo. I did some entries in Dash. I already sold ADA, but I want to rebuy it. Uh, so anyway, what I hold still from this period, I hold Neo. I hold ADA. Oh, sorry, I hold Dash and uh, what else? Um, sorry, I want to check to make sure. Um, I have small Phoenix. I have what else? LRC, Bitcoin Cash SV, something like this. A and B as well. So um, most of people ask it about uh, A and B today. So we will check the chart. Um, anyway, for the long term investment, there is uh, there is few things you need to know. What is your target first? What is your target? You, do you want to make profits in BTC for long term or you want to make profits in USD for long term? If it's about USD, then right now it's not a good time to make uh, long term investments. If it's about BTC uh, performance for long term, well, I would like to say that it's like a 70 percentage that is a good time. And the rest of percentages is for buy lower, of course, uh, if the price will come lower. Um, and uh, what I wanted to check today, um, before we start uh, checking uh, altcoins, uh, just really fast uh, look at um, link, uh, link uh, BTC chart. I noticed that Link BTC is uh, going uh, um, with a versa to the um, altcoins. Look at this chart. Uh, you can see the link started to grow in June. I'm sorry, in July. In July of 2018, where when the everybody, every altcoin was dropping. Draw uh, every altcoin dropping in this time, but link started to grow in, uh, in in August, and right now it's about to drop. Right now it uh, entering uh, distribution phase, and right now it will probably drop. But it needs a lot of time to drop, and uh, what I think, what I did uh, um, understand from this chart. Then, if link will go down, probably most of our coins or shit coins will go up in this period. But not for sure. But so, and this is what I want to say about link. And uh, I want to check some coins. Can we check link USD as well? Yeah, sure. Link USD. Uh huh. Um, it is obvious that that it have here um, triangle, uh, and maybe it is just a fake breakout or something, you know, because why the why the price isn't uh, hold here, and um, here it have. Invert the head and shoulders. What else? Okay, the strong level of the resistance here is reached uh, 0 0.6, 60, uh, 60 tenths. And all of these levels, I don't know will it reach or not, but uh, it is obvious that the price is probably heading to these levels of 30, 35, and maybe even uh, at least this level, 33. So the price is probably going to 33 and make some rebound here. That's what I think on this chart. Um, it is really struggling to break this level. <laughs> Phoenix, do you hear? Uh, yes, bro. I don't follow up link, so no idea. Uh, what do you think about the chart? I know you don't follow up. I don't follow up it too. 
But what do you think about the chart at, at this it stage? Look, uh, like distribution. Mm -hmm. So maybe we see it lower than uh, 0.3. Even lower. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Yeah. This level is too uh, good. Yeah, if, you, if it will drop to 25 cents, I will buy. Okay, let's go next. What we have for today? Uh, well, a lot of people ask it. A lot of people uh, ask it about what? Phoenix, uh, Phoenix coin, red pulse, not Phoenix coin. <laughs> um, okay. 28, right now the price on 28, seven. It is good entry, uh, both with a good entry at 25. So um, make some buys at this moment because uh, the Phoenix right now in the super range, 28 or 25. I uh, bought 5% uh, of Phoenix here on 29 and I will buy another 5% on 25. This is my entry range for this coin. Uh, for the targets, well, the targets are really high, so I don't know, should we describe them? At least 48, maybe even higher, 79, 62, something like this. So, yeah. Good luck with this. Um, what next? Uh, Phoenix, did you check it? What we check need to check today? Yes. Fully. Fully. Uh, yeah, we check it uh, with. Uh, mm, we check it here. Uh, double bottom pattern. Okay, I still think that the price in in uh, in this pattern. I fixed profits in three three thousand five hundred. Uh, and I think to make uh, another buy here on 2,400 uh, 2, uh, or I even bought it, I don't remember. Oh yeah, I bought it. <laughs> I already have it. So uh, yeah, for, for me, I think this super range is good. So uh, you have to have some entries here. Don't see it rent candlesticks, just look at uh, the opportunities here. Okay, for the poly is the update here. Uh, what next? What is NVT? Everybody is talking about NVT today. I no idea. NVT. Huh? NVT. It is like an uh, indicator, not. Uh... How to check it? No idea. Check indicators. <laughs> NVT Bitcoin. What the hell is this? Maybe somebody a pump in their indicator. <laughs> um, NVT, what the hell is this? <laughs> NVT, what is network value to transactions radio? Wow. I don't know what this means. Mike, can you understand what, what the, the hell is means that? Um, hold on. What is that, an indicator? NVT, Network Value Transactions Radio. For me, it's hard to understand what, what, what they are talking about. Um, people talking mm -hmm. that if, if NVT going down, if NVT drop it, then BTC bottom it. If NVT top it, then BTC top <laughs> it as well. So, I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> why it should be better than RSI. <laughs> um, I don't know. There is no interesting... Correlation? Yeah. For me, as, for me at least. Well, how to... Make, how to zoom out? Ah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's like in Burris, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, oh, MVT. MVT, isn't it like a stable coin? No, no, no. In VT is uh, an indicator. Oh. 
network ratio, whatever. Yeah. And you know. Uh, I don't want to make a lot of time to figure out right now. I will check it. Uh, I will make my homework to check NVT indicator and uh, show you guys on the next live stream what I think about it. Okay, and uh, let's go forward. Phoenix, what do you have uh, else to check? The Neo. Neo, have of course. Some Neo. No. Yeah, I hold some Neo. I, I, I... X look good too, but we talked about it last week. Okay, let's check Neo, and after that we will continue. Uh, what about Neo? Mm -hmm. As I uh, showed you guys today, the accumulation uh, phases uh, patterns. And uh, I show it them on my training queue page. Uh, so you can check. You can check the Neo uh, TA as well. For me, it's looking like a descending wedge uh, accumulation. And it's still in E phase. It still didn't reach the uh, its targets. Uh, let me just show you on the live chart uh, what what I'm talking about. Mm. So, yeah, uh, we didn't uh, uh, reach it there, this resistance range of B phase. So uh, we probably going to reach it after a few weeks. Is, uh, as I see, the NEO is going really slow. Um, really slow. I don't uh, like to hold to, for really long term, but uh, I think it's worth to hold because look at the levels which we where we are right now. Uh, the level of uh, two hundred thousand is a really strong level of support range, and the price is just bouncing be, uh, between these ranges. And my target is about. Uh, 48 and uh, 38 uh, on this chart you can see these red levels is my target now uh, for the neo and probably neo will reach even higher uh, this year or next year uh, about 60 or even higher 100 something um, maybe lower uh, the 90 something like this so this is what I'm expecting from neo I will hold it for a little long term. I think it is worth to hold because Litecoin has made a really huge up uh, upside move and reached the resistances of uh, like these levels on Neo, and why Neo wouldn't reach it? We will find out. Um, what else? ICX. ICX look good. We talked about it last week, but we can check it again. It uh -huh. didn't move. Yeah, it didn't move. Uh, as I see, um, ICX no target only. Look, uh, ICX looks like in the similar um, uh, descending wedge, like Neo. You see. So it uh, it was accumulating in this phase. It's still accumulating here. Uh, it probably will make um, just probably will make a flag here. You know, the bull flag or something. Yeah, I would like to buy it. Okay, I bought some. And uh, you have to have some, um, you know, insurance orders in this range. Uh, 600 you know just to make sure that you have average at the entry you know because the price could just pump from this uh, flag or it will make a fake out and uh, you know make move Good. but yeah targets for the ICX is 1300 1100 uh, what else uh, higher uh, 2000 maybe but it's it needs to hold you know like a one year or something 
Okay, you know? can't uh, move to uh, A and G. Yeah, of course. Okay, A and G. Um, um, Wow, we have a really interesting question. Crypto routine asking about, please explain why altcoins go down when BTC go up. Well, uh, it is really an interesting question. Why? And um, there is a, some uh, there is some um, uh, re relations between the coin prices in BTC and USD when the uh, BTC price is going up, altcoins probably going down. Why? Because BTC is, is expensive than it was. So that's why uh, coins dropping in the price. But when um, the price uh, of BTC going up and when market capitalization going up as well, uh, I mean, uh, bigger than if only BTC go up and altcoins will go up too. Uh, for me, it's hard to explain it with uh, English, but uh, I uh, posted in our chat uh, uh, crypto equation. Most of people didn't understand what I meant, but uh, crypto equation is really working and uh, uh, try to find uh, the, I will try to find crypto equation in my uh, telegram and I will share it with you. Uh, okay, I just find it and uh, I will put it in our live stream. Oh, shit. Mm. Okay, guys, in a live stream chat, I posted a link to the our chat room in Telegram where I posted why altcoins going up or going down when BTC go up or down or something doing. Uh, well, continue about ENG. Uh, right now, ENG is on a support range of uh, 3,000. And uh, at the moment, at the moment, it uh, it is moving in uh, b between um, Fibonacci levels, and probably the price will reach uh, four thousand level, and maybe we'll make uh, another low, maybe. Or it will just. Uh, retest this level and uh, go straight forward to the upside and make new highs which is really hard to make after such a big uh, big move so there is another um, scenario here is uh, sideways in a triangle or something uh, you know like a ripple did like a stellar lumen or something so here is the strategy for ENG. I wouldn't. I wouldn't like to buy it. I don't like it. Okay, let us check uh, what member asked about Ada. Let us check Ada again. Ada. We hit our target. Yeah, I fix it. Um, what about Ada? Where is it? Ada, 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 Ada here. At the moment, I don't advise to buy. Uh, maybe, well, it is making a retracement here. Maybe it is a good entry to uh, about 1,500, 1,400 something if the price will reach this region. Because at the moment, uh, let me open the chart. Well, uh, look at the price and RSI. Uh, it is making uh, bearish divergence on this uh, period. 
so I wouldn't buy it at the moment. If you still hold ADA, you can fix with the profits and probably the price will make a reaccumulation phase here between levels of 1,500 and between uh, 2,000, uh, I'm sorry, 1,800 and 1,500. Somewhere between these levels, it will make a reaccumulation and uh, after it, it will hit 3,000 or even higher targets. Uh, it, it really needs to make another, you know, reaccumulation. Maybe a bull flag or something and then go up again. Okay. Um, okay, XRP. XRP, yeah, it's a really important coin. I check it today. I, let me find it. Uh, XRP, yeah. Well, XRP, uh, short term, I still think that the price is probably going to make another wave up. Uh, at the moment, the price is, uh, look at this red level of uh, 33 uh, cent is uh, my stop loss for this price, 32.5 on Bitfinex. I enter it small for the scalping here. Um, so I'm expecting the uh, 40, 40 or maybe 38, 40 cents for the ripple on the next uh, few days. Um, what else here? Wow, this didn't broke the resistance. Maybe I am wrong. So anyway, um, uh, with Bitcoin, it is oversold daily. I check it. Here. Yeah, let me check it with Bitcoin. It maybe make uh, more clear. Okay, I have even TA here. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, it is in my entry area here. Uh, look at RSI. RSI making bullish divergence. So uh, probably the price will reach to 8,000 level here. Maybe we'll go even 9,000 level something. Uh, it is possible, uh, but it, it is short term move. It is not long term move. Uh, and look at uh, this, uh, look at this support. Look at this the rising support price is price just bottom it here. So uh, maybe I did the right things to enter the XRP <laughs> yesterday. Um, okay, so XRP here is a small entry, short-term scalping XRP, and uh, don't put too much in this signal. What else? Uh, storm. Storm, yeah, uh, storm. Really interesting. I wanted to buy it, but I forget. Uh, Storm BTC. Can we have a bigger uh, price history? Storm. Yeah, same there. Okay. Okay. Um, what I like about this chart that the price is look uh, need a lot time to move. Yeah, uh, what I like about this chart it can have a bullish divergence. Look, it is really great to see such a big bullish divergence on two day chart, on daily chart as well. Confirm it. Um, so yeah, uh, I think uh, it is uh, right now in a good entry area with a tight stop loss and uh, rebuy somewhere here. So if 70 wouldn't hold, you just buy a lower at 50. If 70 is good enough to hold, then you hold, you know. Uh, and the target is about 100, 117, 140, 100 as well. Pretty easy chart, pretty easy targets. 
maybe a few weeks to hold. You know. Okay. Okay. Um, Zeal, we can. Zeal. Zeal. Yeah, we need to check Zeal. Zeal. Uh, I have Zeal um, TA on the training queue page. Uh, Zeal, Zeal, Zeal. Where is Zeal? Zeal. Uh, looks like descending wedge plus inverted head and shoulders, but still developing. You know, still developing. It's still in a super range. I hold it. You know, it is in the entry range. So if somebody don't have it, but wants to know what to hold, maybe Zeal is a good opportunity. Um, target six, 600, 800 something. After breakout from this, uh, from this uh, head and shoulders, 135. Yeah, target is 800 maximum. All right, um, guys. Uh, uh, are we taking... Yeah, sure. Uh, guys, I want. Uh, uh, it is really good to see you guys today. But uh, in Ukraine, we just uh, moved our time forward, so it is already night in my uh, country. So. I don't have a lot of time to continue, and I want to, uh, to say thank you to everybody. And I will check Ethereum for them, um, and I have to go. Um, where is the Ethereum? Yeah, Ethereum here. Um, we talked about Ethereum previously, and uh, prices couldn't uh, retest the one hundred sixty area. So it is entered this, uh, you know, what we spoke it on the previous live streams, a short area. So if you want to scalp some shorts, maybe you have you have to close it really, really fast uh, near the levels of uh, what uh, levels one fifty, and uh, this is probably rebound area one fifty. If 150 wouldn't hold, then it will probably go lower to 140 uh, or something. I will move this area here. Will it break down? It is about a matter of the time. So we need to, we will update this chart after a, a while. And uh, for me, as I uh, show it today on, um, on BTC chart, there is still opportunity to having uh, impulse wave one, two, uh, three, and four, and five, something like this. So that's why I um, uh, call it for this 150, uh, 150 level. It is really important level to overlap or to rebound near it. So keep your eye on this level 150 before any decision. Uh, for a longer midterm. Um, so, yeah. Guys, do you want to share okay. something with our viewers? Because we have, we still Thank have. Thank you. For me, I don't have anything to share. Thank okay. you. Um, okay, guys. Thank you for attending us today. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Phoenix, for joining uh, me today. And um, for everybody who watching us, if you like this video, put thumbs up. If you don't like it, Sorry, put thumbs down and write in the comment. What do you want to uh, improve in this live stream? What do you know? What do you want to know more about? Uh, share it. What do you think? And uh, sorry for didn't check a lot of coins today, but uh, I really don't have much time because it's already night and my, uh, my family have to sleep. So um, thank you thank and you. see you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye bye. Goodbye.